a French girl called Delphine, and it's amazing. I remember, I lived in the same house at that time. Short denim skirt, bare legs, cowboy boots. <laughs> This woman here is really reaching into the sky. She really wants to ask a question. Okay, I'll think of something later. <laughs> so, first of all, I want to say that the Cornetto trilogy is my favorite trilogy of all time. Uh, fantastic. I think about Feed Back to the Future tonight. Have wow. you seen Look Who's Talking? Look Who's Talking now. <laughs> <laughs> The third one with the dog is pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the dogs are talking. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, so you guys have talked about, I, I can't remember if it was on DVD commentary or whatnot, that Martin Freeman usually plays the alternate version of Simon Pegg's yeah. character. We saw that in Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. That didn't quite feel like it happened in this movie, but is there some sort of like previous draft or backstory that we don't know? Not really, but I, I think a lot of the other characters, I mean, somebody like Oliver's character is, is just, like, destined to do better, so a lot of the people around him, you know, like, Ma Martin in this film is, like, the sort of the one, like, he's the young at the start and stuff, but he's the one destined to be great in business, so I don't think we really wanted to continue that thing in him being, like, a doppelganger. No, Stephen really is kind of Gary's alter ego. He's the kind of, you know, the second in command. Oliver was, is always a very different, you know, proposition at the top of the film. And as Gary says at the beginning, he was all mad. And at the end of the film, he literally is just a mad. Uh, so he's kind of a completely different character to, to Gary. But it's well done for remembering that, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was really... <laughs> I think it was something we probably struck us when we were watching it. Like, oh, it's a bit weird. He's like a different... But I don't think it, it, it didn't, in the writing process, we didn't think, oh, we, we should do that again. It, it, it sort of didn't, it didn't um, stay as a kind of, um, you know, connected factor. We did the fence jump again. <laughs> yeah, but they, those things did, you know. They were, they, they, like, obviously, the Cornetto and the fence gag are, are jokes that work, work across the three films. But the, the, the Martin thing, I think, probably, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, didn't feel as important. We didn't want to do too many running jokes in the other films because it felt a little bit like it would be going like, yeah, high five guys, yeah. <laughs> so there's only two. There's only the Cornetto and actually there's three because there's the what, what are you doing? Climate change. Yeah. <laughs> That's not in Confuzzle, is it? Sort of in Confuzzle. Yeah. In the boot. When you're in the trunk. Yeah. What are you doing? No, I don't. What are you doing? <laughs> 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 it's got me. It's got me on that one. <laughs> Oh, the fruit machine, oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the fruit machine sound is in there three times. Yeah, that's correct. I can hear, like, music still playing. I can hear boots by like, well, so, like, Sly and Robbie, it's quite thick. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a man with a glowing mouth. 